Hey there, I'm Zach Attack, and maybe you've heard of sea turtles before. Not only are they one of the most endangered creatures on the planet, they're also one of the most popular, going everywhere from fighting ninjas all the way to fighting Godzilla. Sea turtles have spread around the world, between tropical and subtropical areas and environments of the ocean. There are actually seven different species of sea turtle, and here in Florida, where I live, five of those seven species make their nests here along the Florida coast. Just check out this. Here in Florida, one of the most popular things to do is go to the beach. And sometimes you have to share that space with some of Florida's more native critters. For example, our sea turtles. Here in Florida, we actually have five of the seven different species of sea turtles that build their nests right here along the beach. What happens is at nighttime during the summer months, the female will crawl up from the ocean all the way up to the top of the beach, where she'll use her hind flippers to dig out a nice deep hole. She'll deposit her eggs and then finally go back out to the ocean. After a few months, the eggs eventually will hatch and quickly scatter themselves back out into the ocean as quickly as they can to avoid different predators like birds, crabs, and even raccoons. Of the five species of sea turtle that nest here in Florida, four of them are endangered. So it's important to make sure that we don't disturb sea turtle nests when you see ones like this. The important thing about sea turtle nests is that they're actually dependent upon the temperature. Colder temperatures will result in the nests maturing as boys, and warmer temperatures will result in the nests maturing as girls. One of the most interesting things about sea turtles that not a lot of people realize is just how fast they can be. A lot of people confuse turtles with tortoises. The actual difference between a turtle and a tortoise is that a turtle spends part of its life in the ocean or in water and part of its life on land, whereas a tortoise spends its entire life on land. A good way to tell the difference if you're ever confused is look at the feet. If they look like they have flippers or if they look like they have webbing between their claws, it's probably a turtle or a terrapin, which is a close relative. Now, turtles, because they're confused with tortoises, are often thought of as pretty slow. But let me throw an example at you. Let's take the Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps, and let's take a green sea turtle, and let's put them together in a race. Let's see who would win this race. I've given some thought about this and done a little bit of research and of course Googling to go along with this, and I think I've figured out who would win. Who do you think would win? The turtle or Michael Phelps? Regardless, let's look at the statistics. First off, whenever you're swimming, the first thing that's gonna happen is your heart rate's gonna go up. The average human aerobic heart rate is about 180 beats per minute, give or take, depending on the individual, cholesterol levels, stuff like that. A sea turtle, on the other hand, they have been known during hibernation periods to slow their heart rate to one beat every nine minutes. If we could do that, well, we can't do that. We, we would die. <laughs> Another thing that happens whenever you're swimming is you need to be able to hold your breath. That way you can stay underwater longer, stay more streamlined. The average human can hold their breath roughly one to two minutes. The world record is around five minutes. Your average green sea turtle though, they can hold their breath for up to seven hours. Now lastly, whenever you're swimming against someone, the ultimate thing that it comes down to to determine the victor is speed. And of course, in 2012 at the London Olympics, Michael Phelps was determined to be the fastest swimming human being at five miles per hour. Unfortunately for Michael Phelps, the green sea turtle clocks in at about nine miles per hour. I think if we look at all of these things combined, we can determine that the sea turtle would probably win now another cool thing about sea turtles is that they always return to the beaches where they were born. Sea turtles mature around roughly 20 years of age. And around that time, that's whenever they become breeding. At that point, the female will then go to the beach where she was born, where she'll then dig her own nest to lay her own turtle eggs. That's pretty neat. And of course, after those eggs hatch, they'll scuttle towards the ocean as quickly as they can. After a few years, usually around 20, the females that were born at that beach return just to where their mother laid them. And I think that's pretty awesome. Now, turtles are endangered, and there's a few reasons why they're endangered. First off is poaching. A lot of people collect turtle shells. They do look very beautiful. Just check out this hawksbill shell. It's very ornamental, and it looks really quite gorgeous. And you can understand why people would want to make jewelry out of it. 
The only problem comes from whenever people collect too many of these hawksbill sea turtles or other species as well. Now another thing that happens with sea turtles as to why they're endangered is people disturbing their nests. Now here in Florida, if you come during the summertime between about May and August, you're likely to see sea turtle nests just like this one. They're usually marked off by different people that patrol the beach, from Florida Fish and Wildlife to different volunteer groups like Turtle Patrol. But in some countries around the world, people actually harvest the eggs and use them as an aphrodisiac. And that sounds a little bit weird. There's also no scientific evidence whatsoever that a sea turtle egg would act as an aphrodisiac to a human. Another thing you can do to help protect sea turtles is making sure that if you do go overseas, make sure you educate yourself about their cultures. A lot of places, like in Brazil, use turtles as a cultural icon. For example, in Brazil, you can actually find hawksbill sea turtles on their dollar bills. And I think that's a pretty cool way to pay homage to those animals. Now, of the sea turtle species, the largest is the leatherback sea turtle. They can get up to seven feet long, and they can weigh easily more than 2,000 pounds. Leatherbacks are very special among sea turtles because they're the only sea turtle that doesn't have a hard shell. We call that a carapace. It's actually soft and leathery. Guess how they got their name? Being leatherbacks and having a soft leathery shell. The reason the leatherbacks have these ultra soft shells is because leatherbacks dive deep down into the ocean. Some of them have been known to go more than 1600 feet deep just to look for one thing. And it might surprise you that the leatherback sea turtle eats jellyfish. The leatherback's mouth is actually covered in several spines that help direct the jellyfish back down its mouth because that slippery jellyfish can easily fall out. Now, leatherbacks are the second most endangered species of sea turtle compared to my personal favorite, the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. Kemp's Ridley sea turtles nest along the coast of Mexico, a few places in Texas, and here in Florida. The Kemp's Ridleys are very special among sea turtle species because all of the females arrive at the shore at the same time. This is actually, in Mexican, called an arribada, or an arrival, with all the females arriving at the same time to nest. There's a few dangers that come along with this, though. Let's imagine an arribada is happening with the Kemp's Ridley sea turtles, and all of a sudden an oil spill happens along the Gulf of Mexico. Well. All of those sea turtles are now put in an ultra dangerous position where their lives and their eggs can be threatened. So it's important to make sure that we educate ourselves about different sea turtle species and their habits. Sea turtles are one of the most fascinating animals out there. They've been around for nearly 200 million years and they haven't really changed a whole lot in that time. So if you wanna find out more about sea turtles, check out your local sea turtle patrol if you live here in Florida or go to local aquariums they're often there for you to check out and learn about. And with all of this sea turtle knowledge, you must be a know-it-all.